just what I mean You too, T, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it First question came from my guy Serge. He said, I think I speak for all of us when I say we're more than happy with the defensive signings we've made so far this offseason. However, it's obvious we've been lacking at a very important position, that being middle linebacker. Uh, although Patrick Queen is still young and learning, he's not quite yet what we all thought he would be at Mike Linebacker. I myself was excited when we drafted Malik Harrison. However, he hasn't shown that he can be a solid starter. Um, I think with Malik Harrison, we don't know what goes on in practice, um, but I just feel like Malik Harrison hasn't even really been out there like that <clears throat> for us to really see, like to really, really see if he's like that or not. Um, I just feel like he has not been out on the field like that. We remember, of course, the incident that happened last year that kind of like that, that messed things up big time. Uh, or was that two years ago? No, that was last year. Um, but he just, even before that, he just hadn't been out there like that. Um, last I remember was him being out there for the Chiefs game. Um, I think it was like towards the end of it uh, where he started covering Travis Kelsey. Uh, or was it him covering Travis Kelsey through the whole game and then they switched him off at the end? I, I forget. But I just don't remember him consistently being out there on the field uh, like that. But anyway, he said, All the love in the world for Josh Bynes. Uh, he's a smart, reliable veteran linebacker we can depend on. However, he's aging and lacks the athleticism the position requires in this new age of football. And yeah, with Josh Bynes, he is all the things that you mentioned. Um, and yes, um, he does not have the athleticism that a Patrick Queen, that a Malik Harrison might have. Um, like, for him to make a play, uh, he's, he's got to rely on his smarts, big time. Um, and his smarts do make up for a lot, but there's so many times when you see Josh, he, you could tell he knows what's going on, he knows what's coming, but the athleticism just isn't there to, to match his smarts. Um, so, yeah, he is, he is older. He's still been solid for the Ravens, of course, but he is older, and athleticism usually doesn't catch up with your smarts at this point in a career. Like, it reminds me sort of of uh, how Eric Weddle was. Eric Weddle was some super, super, super smart. Super, super smart. This dude knew what was going down uh, on the play. He knew what the offense was doing. He had the smarts, but his body just could not keep up with his brain. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, he said... <laughs> <laughs> he said, though the Bobby Wagner signing didn't work out, we've signed a number of free agents at the position, including one of my personal favorites, uh, Diego F uh, Fago. Uh, my Madden brain is imagining what it would be like to have Chuck Clark take a few snaps at middle linebacker, but that will likely never happen. What do you mean? He's already done that. They got Chuck Clark playing in the box so much, man. Yeah, Chuck Clark has been doing that already. So, and, and, and I en envision him doing that even more. Um, being around the box, being that inside linebacker, dimebacker. Um, and them, because you know they're going to want to have Kyle Hamilton on the field. So they, Chuck Clark, yeah, he's been doing that, and I expect him to do it even more now. Um, so, yeah, it's not just your Madden brain. It's, it's, it's real. It's a real thing. Uh, but he said, as Ravens fans, we've been spoiled with top-tier middle linebackers, and I'm quite possibly overreacting. No, no, no. We, we have been. Of course, obviously, Ray Lewis. Uh, and, and we talk about this all the time, how Ray Lewis just, it, it, he didn't make it fair for other people. He didn't make it fair for, uh, for all the linebackers that came after him. Because they will always be compared to Ray Lewis. Some, will, well, nobody will live up to that. Um, and it's tough. It's tough. Some have been really good, though. Um, others, not so good. Some in between. And anyway, uh, who on our current roster do you see becoming our number two or number three uh, at middle linebacker? Um, or do you think we look towards free agency and sign a guy like A.J. Johnson? I, I, you know, I'm going to be straight up. I don't know who that is at all. I have no clue who A.J. Johnson is. Um, and he said, much love. Now, uh, as far as our, our number two, number three middle linebackers, are we set at inside linebacker? Um, we could be, possibly. But uh, what, like a lot of people have pointed out, uh, especially in today's day and age of the NFL, um, linebackers are used a lot less. Um, so they could have like one linebacker on the field, but they also like to have a, a safety next to that linebacker sort of as the other linebacker. 
uh, while you have like three other corners on the field. Um, so, and w like Patrick Queen, I just, when we talked about this in another video or, or other videos, with Patrick Queen, he, he can do some things, man. If he just cleans up the tackling. If he cleans up that tackling, man, sky is the limit for him. Because he has the athleticism. And as, this, as his career goes on, he'll continue to gain the smarts. The game will slow down for him. Um, so I just hope that this, this is, because this is such a big year for him. It's a huge year for him because this is the year Ravens got to either pick up that fifth-year option or they don't. And if they do, great. It, it doesn't guarantee that he gets a long-term contract. But if they don't, great. It doesn't guarantee that he doesn't get a long-term contract. Because they could decline his fifth-year option and then just have him for the fourth year, and then they could sign him to an extension then. Um, they could pick up his fifth-year option, and then he could play out the fifth year, and they could be, or, or he could get traded. Anything could happen. So it's just, this is such a big year because big decisions on his future, they don't necessarily have to be made, but they will be made because uh, it's crunch time. And we know in today's NFL, like especially as a first-round pick, teams are like, hey, you either got it or you don't. You're either with it or you're not. And with Patrick Queen, um, hopefully things just keep going in the right direction. I know last year was a little bit shaky. Um, but hopefully things continue to go in an upward trend. Um, but as far as behind Patrick Queen or alongside Patrick Queen, yeah, there's Josh Bynes. Um, but again, I feel like Josh Bynes for the Ravens, he's just a safe guy. He's a safe guy to where they're like, ah, yeah, we don't trust our guys yet. We don't really believe in our guys yet. They, they went and tried to sign Bobby Wagner. That should let you know everything that you need to know about how the Ravens felt and feel about their current inside linebackers. They tried to sign Bobby Wagner. And Bobby Wagner would have definitely been uh, an upgrade over Patrick Queen um, based off his experience, everything that he's done, everything that he's capable of, how he's been playing and whatnot. Um, but that lets you know how they feel about him. So... I just, um, we're just hoping that there, there's a big jump. And, and like you mentioned earlier, I, I was excited too when they drafted Malik Harrison. I, I love how my guy Sutton from uh, Purple Rain Podcast, he always called them um, Thunder and Lightning. Malik Harrison was Thunder and Patrick Queen was the Lightning because Malik Harrison brought that thump, brought the power, and Patrick Queen brought that Lightning quickness. And I was envisioning them just being a, a dynamic duo. But we just, we, we haven't gotten to see that yet. Shout out to the helicopter, by the way. Um, so yeah, ho hopefully soon, like they can, uh, it can work out, and, and, and they can, they can both take off together. Um, so I'm hoping that Malik Harrison can be that guy, because Malik Harrison, he he showed when he's played, he showed some flashes. Um, like I, I forget what game it was, where he he was just he looked good in pass coverage, man, and he made like this reaching back. Tip where he tipped the ball up. I, did Marlon Humphrey pick it off? I, maybe somebody picked it off, but anyway, um, he's showing some flashes, and, and he 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 ain't scared of nobody too. He's like um, he reminds me of uh, Deshaun Elliott at linebacker though. Maybe they could they could have used Deshaun Elliott at linebacker, but like Malik Harrison, they they bring out him for the big gun. They're like, hey, oh Derrick Henry coming to town? Malik Harrison, hey you up? Because they know like he ain't afraid to thump with nobody, man. So. I, I hope that he can emerge. I know Josh Bynes probably going to get more of an opportunity than him, but I hope that, like, starting from training camp and in pre and I know they said they're trying him out at outside linebacker too, but I hope that it ends up being Malik Harrison and he really emerges uh, as a nice contributing linebacker for the Ravens, whether it's at inside, whether it's at outside, whether it's at, well, no, I don't really, um, I wouldn't really want him to do the both thing because I just, I feel like sometimes, um, and it all just depends, but sometimes Ravens can try to have these guys do so many different things to where they're not special at, at one thing. Um, and then they just, guys end up just fading away. So I, I would love for him to specialize at one linebacker position and it's like, oh, we know what to expect. And there's nothing wrong with guys being able to do multiple things, especially if you do multiple things well. but. I would just rather him specialize, all right, this dude is an inside linebacker, oh yeah, we know he about to bring it. Or okay, this dude, he emerged as an outside linebacker, oh yeah, we can rely on him. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it's, it's Malik Harrison. I don't, 
really envision them signing anybody else at inside linebacker right now. Simply because, like I mentioned earlier, Chuck Clark's going to be there. Kyle Hamilton's going to be there. Um, so the, I, I just don't expect them to sign another linebacker. But, again, hopefully it ends up being Malik Harrison. Next question came from my guy Marcel. He said, here's why I think we don't need a number one wide receiver. If we get Stanley back, come week one, our O-line will be in the top five, uh, which will give Lamar more time in the pocket, which it will look like we have two number one wide receivers. I think having a great O-line play will override the need for us trading for a wide receiver or picking up a free agent wide receiver. No team but us are three cornerbacks deep. No, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of any right now, but I'm sure there are other teams that are three cornerbacks deep. Uh, but anyway, he said, uh, no team... Uh, other than us, uh, our three cornerbacks deep. Add that in with great O-line play. I see Lamar hitting over 4K passing this season. Yeah, uh, again, the, with, with the offensive line, it's great that, and we certainly hope that Ronnie Stanley comes back because that would make everything so much better for everybody. Um, but with the uh, with that, I just, I feel like that mindset, it just, it sounds like settling. It's like, all right, well, if, if Lamar got the good, a good offensive line, well, that's good enough. Why not give him the great offensive line and an even greater uh, even greater passing weapons? Next question came from my guy, Rave Kingdom. He said, first off, I appreciate you engraving and hopefully you and the fam are doing well. Hey, we're doing really good, man. I appreciate you. Uh, he said, I understand your reasoning for wanting a wide receiver. And I actually agree 100% on your reasoning. But don't you find it suspicious Ravens players from the past and future are coming out and saying the wide receiver group ain't the issue and continue to expose the play calling in Greg Roman's system? Rashad Bateman and Hollywood Brown have come out and said the wide receiver group is good enough. Well, that could be true, but at the same time, what would you expect wide receivers to say? Would a wide receiver come out and say, oh, no, 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 we need more. <laughs> no, 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 we ain't good enough. Oh, oh no, 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 we, we could use one of them guys. So they ain't really going to say that. Uh, but anyway, he said, Bateman went as far as to say we can win a Super Bowl with the group that we have. That's great um, that he came out and said that, but again, I, I wouldn't expect them to say anything different. So, but anyway, uh, he said, uh, it's too many people calling out Greg Roman's system and too much evidence saying the wide receivers we have are good enough. That part I disagree with. I, I, don't, I don't think there's evidence that says the, the receivers that the Ravens have are good enough. I don't think there's any evidence on that um, because all of them are unproven. So had they, had they came over from another system or something or another team or something and they had proven themselves, then they came to the Ravens and it's like, oh, what's going on? And if they were like that on another team, then I, okay, there's evidence. But it's, it's unfortunate for them because there's not evidence because they are unproven. And yeah, the Ravens system, it, it, it is a big yike sometimes when it comes to wide receivers. Um, so I, I don't think there's evidence that's proven that they're good enough. Uh, he said, no disrespect, but I feel you should pause on the pushing for another wide receiver and actually give them a fair opportunity to show what they got. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Um, I don't control anything that happens, but I, I'm never going to stop wanting more for Lamar. I'm never going to want, I'm never going to want to stop wanting Lamar to have the best of the best. See, you, you, you try to be outside doing a video in the fresh air and the camera just keeps overheating. But anyway, like I was saying, no, I, I'm never going to stop wanting the Ravens to do the most and the best for their quarterback. Never, ever. It was the same way with Joe Flacco. I was saying the same thing back then saying the same thing now for Lamar Jackson. So no, I'm not. Why would I? Why, again, back to the previous question too. And I understand, hey, we want to give the young guys a shot, but the young guys can still get their shot even if they get somebody, if, even if the Ravens got somebody else who's already like that. Why would you not want Lamar Jackson, your quarterback, why would you not want his job to be the easiest as possible? Why would you not want to, to really try to make sure there were no excuses to where you could reach his full potential and pull it all, all the way out. Why, why wouldn't you want that? So, no. But anyway, he said, because trust me, they're looking at Hollywood departure, Greg Roman being on the hot seat, and Ravens saying they want to involve more passing to their game plan as a golden opportunity. We'll see. They've, they've talked the talk, but we'll see. We'll see if with a healthy roster, if they continue up in the passing game by by the high again by the hires that they've made it looks like it but seeing is believing um they they still gotta prove that so we'll see how this thing shakes out 
And the last question on this episode came from Elix. He said, hey, Engraven, how are you? How's the family life treating you? Everything is very good. I have a question for you. Can we start the calling Greg Roman by his full name, Gregory P. Roman, until passing game gets some love and creativity? Please. Yeah, let, let, that, let that man be, man. Um, Greg Roman certainly uh, is not blameless. He isn't. Um, and I know everybody likes to go at Greg Roman like, oh, yeah, the issue is Greg Roman, Greg Roman. And there are issues with his offense for sure. We know it specializes in run, doesn't specialize in pass. We, we get that. We know that. Um, but the Ravens, it's their philosophy. And it's been their philosophy that has a lack of emphasis on the passing game. That is not new news. That's not new news. Greg Roman just so happens to be the offensive coordinator. With, and I think the, the reason that Greg Roman gets so much heat, and again, he, he does deserve some of it now, but it's not all him. It's Ravens' philosophy. It's much deeper than a Greg Roman. It's way deeper than Greg Roman. But the reason that he does get a lot of heat, which I can understand, is because the timing. He and the Ravens' offense, they have a, a quarterback who is not just your average quarterback, and we are just waiting for them to pull that potential all the way out. They've scratched the surface, but they ain't there yet. They have not gotten the best out of Lamar yet, and that's why so many people are frustrated. That's why. Because you have somebody like him, but it seems like they got these training wheels on, they don't want to let him loose, and it's, it's just been... Not necessarily minimal growth, but he could have had a lot more growth than he's had. Yeah, this feels like a dream.